back to this national issue. And as I said, I was disturbed over the weekend. I was disturbed last week for a start that the Post newspaper ran an ad uh, by John Minto for an organisation that seems to be just a bank account that he can grift money out of called the Palestinian Council in New Zealand or whatever. Couldn't give me any details. It's not a legal body, but he wants people to send it money and it sells flags, Palestinian flags and organisers rallies, but that ad was run, page two of the, of the Post newspaper, claiming that Israel was committing genocide and ethnic cleansing and calling for a boycott of Israel and the expulsion of the Israeli ambassador. I thought it was outrageous from a paper that wouldn't run uh, ads, and far less controversial ads, uh, advertising public meetings for the Stop Code Governance Group and even uh, ads for, um, for Family First. But, oh, they'll run CTU ads, and they'll basically run ads that support terrorism. I was even, uh, I was dismayed this morning when I come into work, and instead of having a cartoon, the Post newspaper has a poem from a guy called Rafid Alaria, who is, as well as being a poet, appears to be a terrorist, who died on December the 7th. But stuff is, as we know, is woke. They have chosen the side of terrorists. Um... But then I find that the Herald, uh, and yesterday I get this email from the Free Speech Union. Well, I'll let actually Jonathan Ayling from the Free Speech Union tell the story uh, now. Jonathan, uh, thank you for joining us. And I know you're at a busy time of the year and you're actually off work. So thanks for making the time. It's an important story. Can you walk us through what's happened with the Herald? Well, as you've outlined there, Sean, we've had a, a, a series of of really concerning instances from, from major publishers around the country over the course of this year. And this was just uh, yet another in that saga. There's a group called Shalom Israel, which is a, uh, a group of uh, Israeli expats that are based here in New Zealand. And they looked to put a, an advertorial, as so it, was, it was printed as, as a note, but it, it was paid for as an ad, uh, just outlining their perspective on on uh, on what's going on there right now and in Israel and and why uh, they they're continuing to feel unsafe in New Zealand but also why you know they chose to be in New Zealand as a country that is stable and peaceful that they have come to invest in and uh, and when they approached uh, the Herald about this Harold came back to them and said, there's some minor changes we want made, often for legal reasons. That's uh, a very fair response. But they said, we're happy to run the ad with minor changes, but actually we're going to need you to cough up uh, quite a significant sum uh, for security charges for our offices. Remember, NZME is the largest publisher in the country. It wasn't clear whether it was just their main office or, or their various offices around the country that needed protecting because if they did run this ad, uh, they would, in in NZME's opinion, be targeted by protests, possibly violent mobs, and would need extra security. We're really concerned by the precedent that's been set here. I think you can view it as one of two ways. Either NZME is acting in good faith here, which is very concerning, or they're acting in bad faith, and I'm not sure which is actually worse. If they are acting in good faith, if they genuinely believe that there is a legitimate security risk for showing this ad, which, which is entirely innocuous. You know, people may disagree that uh, Israelis or Jews in New Zealand are, are, are becoming increasingly unsafe. That's fine. But other than that, there's nothing uh, scandalous about this. If it is true that a New Zealand uh, Herald office will be targeted for this, the, the, the state of the fourth estate and the, and the state of free speech... That's like the Posey Parker with, rally on speed. That's Charlie uh, Hebdo it, it, stuff. It, this is, it, that's exactly right. This is publish a Prophet Muhammad and, and have people killed type stuff. Uh, and, and, and I think we've seen this erosion of press freedom and of free speech in countries around the world. We haven't really had that moment yet here in New Zealand. And, and I'm deeply concerned if this is an example of that. Uh, my suspicion, though, between you and me, Sean, is that it's not that situation. That would be the assumption that NZME is operating in good faith. Uh, possibly they got a security opinion or yeah. approached police New Zealand and, and, and that they had legitimate reasons to think that the officers would, would be attacked. It's not. It's woke censorship, isn't it? 
that I, I find it very hard to believe that's the case. I think it's far more likely that some sales officer saw it, said, yep, we're going to charge you $3,500 for a half-page ad in the Herald. We need these minor changes. Better, better just run this past legal just to make sure. And some, some person in legal has gone, mm, I don't like this. Either for self-preservation reasons, going, mm, you know, there, there, there's, a, there's a way for us to get out of this, or, or for bias reasons. Uh, you know, this is a fairly cynical way of looking at this, but it, yeah. it doesn't... Well, uh, uh, Jonathan, I'm going to give you I'm going to give you another scenario. Our ma- mainstream media have become so liberal, so progressive, so woke, they're fundamentally anti-Semites. Th- that, that is a, a possibility, I, a, and, and I think that fits in, in, in a bad faith scenario. I, yeah. I don't know who made this decision. I don't know their exact motivations. What I do know, Sean, is that it is bad news for our fourth estate, and it is bad news for New Zealanders' free speech if something as innocuous in the, as this can't be published in New Zealand's paper of record. Whether we like it or not, the New Zealand Herald is our leading newspaper in terms of what we expect to account for the happenings of our country. And, yeah. and if this is a perspective and a movement in New Zealand that is seeking some legitimate attention and they're willing to pay for it, of course, you yeah. know, they should have to then it is, it is bad news. Do you think they us. need to enter now into a d- public discourse about this? Because they're not going to. You know they're going to sit there and say, we're all on a holiday, we don't discuss this. These are the very things that we should be using our free speech to discuss, and our media should be part of those discussions. Well, that's exactly right, and that's why I think more and more organisations in civil society like the Free Speech Union and others play an increasingly crucial role in facilitating these conversations. Last week, we held a panel discussion with some brilliant commentators on the Israeli-Gaza conflict, not on on the substance of the conflict, but just on the free speech aspects of it, going, what are the contours of what we're allowed to say and what we're not here? And I think those sorts of conversations are crucial because it is such an emotive discussion, we need to hear from different perspectives, even just in terms of where the lines of that debate should be drawn. And we see, we have been failed time and time again uh, by those who should be facilitating that conversation. And that's why we've called on our tens of thousands of supporters around the country to contact the police commissioner and say, you need to ensure that the fourth estate feels safe enough to do its job. And really, that's the crux of the matter. Like we saw... Yeah, and, but he won't do anything the... if the whole excuse was bullshit in the first place, Jonathan. Well, well, but that's exactly right. Then we're smoking out the hypocrites. So yeah. if, if the police commissioner comes and he says, there is no reason for us to think that there was any security risk, we can go back to NZ Herald and we can go back to the other hypocrites and say, the fourth estate of all, organiz- of all uh, parties should be most invested in free speech. It is a very... Unfortunately, they're not. They are legacy no, media. But, but, I'm just going to say they're not. I, 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 I agree, but I think you know this better than most. It is a very short-term view for the, for the media to not be invested in free speech. The media are the ones that, that exist in order to promote interesting and important discussions.